Welcome to the Crop Production Series by New Farm. At the request of growers who work with daily in the field, there was a question about what materials would be best to use on new crops, that is, right from the seeding stage when germination has just begun, and from cuttings, which we're inducing roots uh, from that cutting stage. And the plants are very sensitive. There's uh, very little root structure. They're very soft tissued and we're working them in an environment with high humidity and temperatures. So we decided to put together this series, the beginning part from the beginning on that early stage. So disease prevention programming begins with recommendations from pathologists in the industry. And this is based on Mary Hausbeck's uh, recommendations at Michigan State University and uh, the series for 2020 on what materials work on the four main water molds or soil borne uh, pathogens that affect the plants during this early stage. So before we get into the materials that we use to prevent it from a chemical side, all growers need to focus on preparation for the new crop. That is in between when the last crop has moved out or at the beginning of the year, the area needs to be sanitized and cleaned. That's you know raking up any of a uh, litter that's there, sweeping up any soil, sanitizing the walls and the floors with a sanitizing oxidizing material, and then reviewing your inputs because all these things play a part on how the crop performs which media works with which crop, there's new hardier species that are coming available, which plugs and seed source are you utilizing? Are you comfortable with that? Is it something that uh, you're doing yourself internally? And then once you get past that into the fertility program, what materials uh, formulations do you use when, at what rate and how often, the trays and pots impact how the water flows and the air flows through the uh, media as well. Plus, most growers have to deal with water modifiers because they're alkaline conditions. So you have acid that you're injecting at a specific rate, and then a lot of growers are reusing their existing water. So they have to make sure their filters are right and that the pathogens are removed or oxidized or UV lighted so that you don't reinfect your crop from the water you used the previous day. Lastly, and lastly, in, in a lot of cases in this preparation phase, what chemical materials should you be utilizing and have in your uh, toolbox warehouse? Now, moving on into the growing area, at least the propagation area, before you move it into the, uh, the rest of the uh, growing on area in the greenhouses, you have to look at the environmental controls that impact your plant material as well. So disease prevention begins with cultural aspects. That is, again, we identified the, the media as one of those things. If you have a good media, then you're not going to have as many problems as long as the porosity is good and you have good airflow and water flow through that media for that plant itself. Besides the soil porosity and moisture levels, the atmospheric moisture levels also play a key factor. You want to keep the greenhouse moist, at least in the initial propagation stages, uh, but you don't want to keep it too much to have diseases to sporulate easily and infect your crop. So the moisture level in the environment as well as the airflow in the environment are key factors to preventing germination of the disease pathogens themselves. So again, if you're growing on benches, that's one thing. You have airflow underneath the bench, which helps. You have airflow around the plant, depending on how tightly spaced they are within that propagation area. And then you have the airflow area above the plant material which you use the circulation fans and heaters to dry that, that uh, moisture laden air out so that you don't have that free moisture for the disease to sporulate in. Temperature also plays a key uh, aspect into it. You want to really keep the bottom areas warm to induce the rooting, but also again, that warm temperature might be just a sweet spot for those diseases to sporulate and to infect your crop. So temperature has to be monitored at all times. And then lastly, because we're working in the springtime 
and we have a lot of uh, transitional weather where it's overcast and rainy and cold. Uh, all these are key times for plants to be stressed and chart, start to stretch a little bit because there's not enough light. So if you have the capacity for supplemental lighting past the point where you want to induce top growth over root growth, then please use your supplemental lighting. So here are the four diseases we are looking at which affect our early crops the most. Pythium, Thaleviopsis, Phytophthora, and Rhizoctonia. For Pythium, the Michigan State Group recommends Truban or Terrazol, Banol, Subdue Max, and Captan are their four main A-team materials. And you'll notice in parentheses behind the active ingredients, the FRAC or the Fungicide Resistance Actions Committee uh, classifications, they're completely different. So you have four different families you can rotate through without an issue of building resistance to Pythium. Included with this group are the secondary products, which include Fenstop, Heritage, Segway, and Elude. So what does Pythium look like? Well, it's known as seed rot, root rot, seedling damping off, black leg, and rot of lower stems. So here are examples of those nicknames for Pythium. The first photograph shows you the uh, leg and root rot of lower stems, uh, this on geranium, and also you'll see a general degradation of the plant uh, as a seedling called a damping off on the uh, uh, geranium in the second photograph. And then the chrysanthemums on the uh, third and fourth photograph, you'll see a total uh, degradation or uh, wilting out of the uh, entire plant in the third photograph. And then you notice the, in the last photograph, there's probably four or five cuttings in here, and only one of the cutting groups was affected with Pythium. Uh, again, with most diseases, you really don't know what it is by looking at it. You need to send a sample to the laboratory, if a pathology lab at the, your local university or an independent lab, and get it analyzed, which takes time. And why mostly with these diseases you're working with early on, it's best to do a prophylactic treatment before you have the disease problem. You have the protection in place because it's always much easier to protect than it is to eradicate. The Laviopsis has only four materials that are really uh, effective in the study. That's 3336, the EG, extruded granule formulation, or the Flobo. Terragard, Sparato is the liquid formulation of fluidioxanil. Medallion is the dry formulation. And then Terni, which is a systemic fungicide, metconazole. So uh, again, you'll notice in these classifications, that uh, three of these are different FRAC or fungicide resistant action committee classifications and two of them have the same classification which is not really what you want to have but if you have very few materials that are efficacious you have to work around and rotate through these in a, uh, a good cycle to prevent a category three being applied twice in a row so rotate through 3336 to Terragard or to Terni, and then Sparato to Terni to Terragard. Black root rot is the Labiopsis, and you got to watch this on the Callies, the Pansies, the Vincas, and the Petunias. They're very susceptible to black root rot. The first photograph, you can see that what would be a mass of white, healthy roots in those plugs are not there. So you only see healthy steels on, on a couple of the, the roots that are just left languishing, languishing there. Uh, and more illustrative is the second photograph where the first plant is uh, obviously affected with the Laviopsis and the second plant is healthy. So same plant, same age, but uh, about less than a fifth of the roots that are available in a healthy plant. And by the time you get to a flat that looks like this in the third photograph, it's way past due. And this flat should probably be removed from the greenhouse. You, you see the spottiness, the, the uh, difference within the same flat. So you can have a healthy plant next to an unhealthy plant. And it could be primarily done to moisture control. 
So with flaviopsis, you got to really be careful about that and uh, watch it on the callies, the pansies, vincas, and the petunias. For Phytophthora, uh, the main items that the uh, Michigan State group are recommending is Subdue Max, Adorn, Mycora, and Segovis. These are the uh, four main products, and you'll notice that the frac numbers are completely different, so these can be used in sequence or rotation very easily amongst themselves. Uh, also, the secondary products that are uh, acceptable for, for Phytophthora include Fenstop, Elude, Captan, Aliet, Segway, and the Truban or Terrazol material. Phytophthora presents itself almost like a melting out. It has a, uh, a blight look, so the first photograph, you'll see the hookeras are uh, <clears throat> kind of melted down, they're blighted out. And then the second photograph, you'll see the root rot um, here, and you see it moving up the stem a little bit. And then the, the, the last photograph from the University of Georgia also shows you the, the blighting effect on individual pots. So um, not a whole lot different between the, the two, three different materials we've looked at so far. And again, why a lab test is recommended before you make a final analysis. For Rhizoctonia, Spirato, which is again the liquid formulation of Flutioxnil or Medallion, Terrachlor, Affirm, and Terni are the four recommended materials for your primary rotation. And all the frac numbers are different, so you're in good shape there. Secondarily, products are listed as Pageant, 3336 again, Captan, and Heritage. So Rhizoctonia will look like a uh, root rot in the first photograph. You can see still some viable roots, but there's a lot more uh, dark black roots that are just atrophied in that first photograph. The stem rot is demonstrated in the second photograph. You can see how it's moved up the stem and attacked the vascular tissue there on this plant. And then it can show up as a crown rot, especially in cyclamen. On the left, you'll notice that the plant is totally uh, uh, degraded and the healthy plant on the right, just completely different comparison. Uh, and lastly, you'll see an overall uh, a plant degradation with uh, Rhizoctonia uh, affecting the root system and stem as well there. So in summary of, of the materials recommended by Michigan State for 2020, you'll notice that nearly half of these materials are manufactured by New Farm, which is part of our ongoing work to supply growers with materials they need to grow the crops that they want to, to sell, and includes our products 3336 EG, the extruded granule, or the F flowable formulations of thiophanate methyl, Terni, which is our metconazole, Spirato, which is our flowable flutioxanil, Affirm, which is polyoxin D, and Adorn, our fluopicolide. Other materials include Terragard, Subdue Max, Truban and Terrazol, Terrachlor 400, Banal, Mycora, Segovis, and Captan. All these materials will work on the four water bowls that we discussed, the Pythium, Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia, and Thalaviopsis and will do a good job of cleaning up your crop and preventing the disease from uh, affecting the crop when they're in that sensitive young stage. This concludes our discussion on the new crops and we will be putting together a uh, slide set on the growing up crops shortly.